let's continue now add the rest of these polylines in now I probably need to take polylines to each of these front ones and the curb but I don't necessarily need to take all the polylines back to here they'd end up being too many facets in the back so I'll show you what I mean by that so let's take a polyline from here to this node then perpendicular then I'm gonna to go to the middle here okay probably probably another one from about there to the middle to the curb to the back similarly here going about halfway to the middle one to the curb to the back then we'll do one from here to the middle point where the two curves join then to the back that's probably enough there so I'm just gonna now bring them to the front only to the roads front and the back of curb I'm trying to kind of get the relationships the same okay so dividing it up evenly and then finish off these ones right the the facing up here could be done in a number of ways I don't really need to in, introduce all these faces here I could start from one point and go to a number of these and I'll show you what I mean by that so we'll we'll tilt it over so we don't see the the 2d stuff below okay I think I'll start with the roads again just be consistent and then 3d face let's go from we'll go from this middle one to there to here but then back okay so I'm facing it up slightly differently so I've only actually got one edge there to deal with later on Okay, you decide how how these things will be broken up. I'm just wary that I might introduce too many facets. Makes it more of a job to join the sections together. Okay, that looks a bit complicated. Let's add the the uh, curbs in just now just to, to make it a bit clearer so the curb goes in fairly easily and then the path behind okay we do this in a similar fashion I don't need to pick up every single position so I'm doing every second one here so it's a triangle 3d face followed by a four-sided 3d face okay let's carry on do some more surfacing okay a lot more triangles on this side okay there's no right or wrong it's just however much work you want to bite off or not so you see the pattern can can change but it's still it's still consistent Okay, we then got curbs to do there. 
getting a bit closer for the curbs. And then the roadway, trying to minimize the number of start positions on this particular side. So I'm doing quite a, few, a little spread of triangles from there. Then I'll put in a big one to get me back up to this corner. Then another cluster of triangles. Okay, I think I've taken that far enough. I'll go to here now. And then some more triangles. Let's do a big one there. And then a final triangle. Okay, if I just shade that, you can see where we're at. So it's looking nice and clean. There's no dramatic changes in color there. A wee bit of a darkening here. Okay, and you could you could remove that by using the stretch command with a crossing window. Put ortho on, so you go straight up and down, and I could take a bit of height out of that particular lump. Now you you control how this how this geometry works. All right, go back to 2D wireframe, and I'm going to use the SSX command to extract these white polylines. So SSX pick a polyline and return it's found 26, I don't have to go looking for them all then E return P return return again that's cleared all that way now I've got to deal with the fronts of the curbs so I'm going to draw just a, a basic 2D line so I'll go back to home find my curb front layer and I'll just trace a line around the very fronts of the curbs. Okay. Nearly there now, just the longer segments to do. Okay, now I want to lift pavement and the curb top up leaving the road at the lower level so I can use SSX again SSX return pick the path and return it's found 28 items I now move them so it's M return P for previous objects return again because you don't want to add any more to that selection Orthos on, that's fine. I can select a base point, well clear of anything else in the black. Pick my base point, set the direction, which is positive Z, and the distance is 125 millimeters. Okay, let's do the same with the curbs. SSX, return. Pick the curb tops, return. Slightly less of those. M, return. P, return twice. Now you don't have to do a distance on that because we've got the distance here. It's from end point to end point. So the base point here, destination point there. Okay, we've now got a gap. Okay, gap between road and pavement and curb top, which we'll fill by changing this, these lines, to a line with thickness. So we SSX them again. Pick the curb fronts, return, 23 of those because there would be a matching number to the yellow items. And then we do a change command but using it from the keyboard. So it's minus CH, return, P for the previous objects, return, return again because you don't want to add anything else. Now the letter P is used for properties. So it's P return, the property we want to change is thickness, so it's T return and the new thickness could be picked from the screen it's there to there or type in 125 and return twice and that has given us a 
step we can see here a bit more a bit more obvious what's going on there and that's how that's done I'll just shade that so you can see what it looks like give it a turn okay so if you if you get your your roads roads and pavements in then it's a much easier job to deal with the bits of land in between.